Welcome to another video. In today's video, it's going to be a continuation of a repair series. Let me show you four repairs that can be done DIY. So let's start out right here at the dinette. If you look at the dinette, when we use the dinette or to convert the uh, dinette into a bed, you can see this little piece of wood. The stain on this has worn out over time. So this is what I have on hand. I have these stain sticks. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but these two are the colors that I have on hand. I'll put some links to this, but really simple. They're kind of like a glorified crayon stain. You apply it just like basically a crayon. Now what I've, uh, this is again, this is what I have on hand. So I'll go ahead and do this and uh, let's discuss this a little further. So the only thing I don't like about it is that this stain color that I used is not an exact stain match. And I bought these individually, but uh, here's the color that I ended up using. And again, not the uh, best match, but I'll put a link in the description. You can buy these, it doesn't have to be this brand, but you can buy a complete package with different uh, colors on there. And you can buy a whole kit, they're relatively inexpensive. And now this one is a stain, you can see, fill stick. So it's like a, crayon wax product with a color in it so if you actually have a chunk missing this would be a good fit for it now they do have other kinds they're more like a uh, marker with uh, different stain colors that's probably all I needed for this but this is what I had in hand and it works good enough so that's a uh, repair number one let's go to a second repair now in a second repair a common item is this dinette table the problem uh, with this dinette table is that the table is really easy to remove but the base this leg has a tendency to stick in this base and it's a real pain in the butt to get this out sometimes it gets uh, stuck so bad that it's almost impossible to take out so a little pointer that I have is you can just remove these screws on the bottom they're just Phillips screws they attach to the metal down below they come off uh, relatively easy and then this base is attached to here so if it's stuck if you can look from the bottom you can pound that portion out with a hammer and a screwdriver and you can separate these two pieces but now that's what I did for a while and I even put some spray lube in here and uh, I think I put some blue tape on here to see if the leg would come off easier and it would always get stuck over time and let's look at it closely on why it's getting stuck I don't know if the camera will pick up the lighting, but do you notice the bottom of the leg doesn't actually travel all the way to the base? The problem is that the friction-wise, it's bottoming out. It's actually getting too tight before it gets down to the bottom. Ideally, this leg looks like it needs to be about three quarters of an inch longer. So let's separate these. I'll have to do this off camera here. Okay. Now that I've separated this, what I did was I actually made a filler piece here, about three quarter inch thick, and I'm going to put this inside here, and that will cover the basically the gap that you saw down below. I'll show you a little clips of how I did this. Here's a glimpse of why this leg is getting stuck in here. Let's uh, look at it with the base removed and from the bottom. I don't know if you can tell from the lighting here, but the actual inner piece bottoms out before it gets to the very bottom. So the friction is way too tight. The more pressure you put on, I don't know if I can get good lighting here, but it bottoms out way too soon. So that's what's happening is the leg friction is way too tight. The more pressure you put on the table, the tighter this is going to get and it physically gets stuck. So this is what we're going to do. So I took this leg off here and what I did was I traced it around this piece of wood. It's a little over three quarter inch thick. When I stuck the uh, leg inside, what I did was I put a marking with a Sharpie here and then I measured the thickness difference. So that's what, uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, cut this out with a jigsaw and I'll be back. Well, I did cut this piece out with a jigsaw. Now my next step 
is I'll have to sand the edges smoothly so I can get it to fit inside the base. Well, here's the uh, finished piece. This piece took quite a while to make. I bet you I spent over an hour on it. You know, the inside piece here has to be tapered for it to fit down to the bottom. Again, it'll be hard to pick up on camera, but this leg is not straight all the way down. It actually tapers smaller at the very bottom. So you can't just cut a round piece of wood. It also has to taper smaller on the bottom side, so it has to be a smaller hole. Ideally, this is probably not the uh, most fun uh, DIY project. If somebody has a 3D printer, you could probably make a 3D printer that would fit in here a little bit better and easier. Uh, if you're up for spending, you know, an hour on cutting it, sanding it, fitting it in here numerous times, uh, this is something uh, you could do. But if somebody can come up with a 3D print of this, that'd be the easiest thing to do. So. Let's go ahead and put this back together. Okay, I got the uh, piece back here. So you can see I put the uh, shim piece down here. Like you saw in the previous clip, that shim was a pain in the butt to make. So if somebody else can make it better with a 3D printed piece, it'd be much easier. We'll put this uh, back in. And before I screw this down, we'll just do a dry fit here. And you can see now on the dry fit, the issue I'm going to have is that it can spin because it's that piece is not down all the way. And I'll make that up with a piece of tape or something like that to provide a little more friction so it doesn't spin too easy. But this way at least you can get the table out. Another common item that I notice on mine anyways is this fabric that hides the springs underneath the couch, this always likes to fall off. You can see this, uh, especially when it's really hot. This always likes to fall off. And what I've done along the way is put on this spray adhesive. Now this is a Gorilla brand. I usually have the 3M brand in hand, but I didn't have any, so this is what I have in hand. This spray adhesive, this and the 3M, works really well for fabric. So this is what I uh, applied on. I've already applied it. You let it get tacky and then you just put it on here. So let's see here. Just like that. So instead of living with it, having it keep falling down, just get some of this adhesive, this or 3M. Uh, you can get it at any of the big box stores like Home Depot or Lowe's, I'm sure. But this is what I use. And finally, let me show you the last item that I have on here. I've already made the repair, but let's go to the back. Now on these counters, this countertop here, uh, if you watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that this counter is a laminate counter that's this laminate is glued onto a foam core so whenever it gets wet like in my bathroom it's common for the top of the counter to get wet this laminate can separate from the foam itself and i can't show you because i've made the repair already but the corner of my sink here started lifting up over time and what i did was i pried it open a little bit and I put in, squeezed in, white silicone caulking. I, I pushed the silicone in as far as I could while I had this laminate lifted. And then I used basically a clamp. And you can see, let me see if I can get a better angle at this. So you can see on this clamp, I used this little angle bracket here. That way I can get it closest to the edge as possible and I squeeze this tight and I let it clamp down there for several days. Now that's what I used because I had the white caulking on hand, but the best adhesive to use for a foam core with this laminate would be the contact cement. You could take a little syringe and inject contact cement in here, but the white silicone is what I had in hand and it worked perfectly fine. So a common item, I'm sure uh, you'll run into it here. And if you let the water flow too much in your kitchen area, the same thing could happen here.
I haven't had uh, that happen here yet. Uh, you know, I'm pretty cautious of how much water runs this way, but all it takes is a little bit of water to start going under that laminate and it'll separate from that foam core. Well, that's it. Those are the four items I think you can do a simple DIY. Like I mentioned, you could get a stain stick to touch up any stains that you have damaged in any cabinets throughout. I couldn't show you for any other example because my cabinets are in pretty good condition. But looking at it wise, I'd get some type of stain stick on hand. That way you don't have to live with those little chips. This table leg that you saw, now you see what is causing it from sticking and almost impossible to lift that leg out. So looking at it now, mine spins pretty easy. But like I mentioned, I could just make that up with tape on the bottom and that will prevent it from uh, basically spinning too easy, but at least I'll be able to just pull it out. And then of course you saw the uh, fabric spray and the countertop. So that's it for the uh, repair series on this video. If you'd like to uh, see more videos like this, make sure you hit that uh, click that subscribe button. I do have a few more repair series coming up, so hit that thumbs up as well, and we'll see you on the next video.